you know, there, there's a lot of stereotypes, I guess, that you see about mathematicians and about what kind of people can be mathematicians. But um, I'm hoping that every time I stand up in front of a room full of people and say, hi, I'm a mathematician, that that helps a little bit, maybe. <laughs> so, so you consciously thwart that stereotype? I, yeah, I don't know, because I, I also feel like I join in with it in a lot of ways. You know, I get obsessive about things and, you know, I, you know, there's a lot of parts of that stereotype that I definitely conform to. And, you know, I love making spreadsheets and all of these things. And, you know, sometimes that's a little bit played for laughs, I guess, in the in the sort of uh, entertainment stuff that I do. Um, but I also think that, you know, people who do maths are cool people. Like they are the kind of people that if you were trapped in a lift with them, they would at least have something interesting to show you. Um, and, uh, you know, I always try to, um, I, I mean, because this is the thing, sometimes people react really weirdly. If you say you're a mathematician, they'll say something like, oh, I hate maths. <laughs> you think, wow, thanks, you know. I, I hate what you do. <laughs> like it's, it's just a really weird thing to say back to someone. But it, it it's one of those things that people who are, you know, they're, they're frightened of it or they found it difficult or they had a bad experience with it can sometimes just put that kind of wall up. Um, but I always try if someone tells me what they do to find something interesting in it. You know, so if, you know, someone says, oh, I, you know, I do. Uh, I'm a journalist or whatever. I'd be like, oh, you know, what kind of thing do you write about and try and find some sort of. A touch point for us to to talk about and you know having a vague general knowledge of lots of things means I can usually hold my own in a conversation like that but it's sort of weird that if I say I'm a mathematician very occasionally someone will say oh I saw a really cool maths thing the other day you like this um, but mostly it's it's a difficult one to to start the conversation about so I mean maybe that's something else that I can try and change by by being interesting and by showing people you know, interesting maths things that if they see another mathematician, they don't think, oh, you must be like that. They think, oh, maybe you're like that other person I saw. There's so much, so many people out there who equate mathematics as just arithmetic and really doing it fast. Like, mm. like really talented at that fast stuff. <laughs> I, I know my, my, my hairdresser, oh, I, I was terrible at that. And I said, you know, you're, you're looking at the vectors of all of these hair follicles going off in different directions. <laughs> like you're a yeah. mathematician. You're, you're yeah. like a sculptor, mathematician, geometer in real time. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's at least one mathematical theorem that hairdressers are an expert in, right? Yeah. Which is that, the, the that, hairy uh, ball theorem. No, that's right. That's right. Apology. Yeah. I, I should have brought that up with her. <laughs> I think it is the, the silliest named theorem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just this idea if, if if anyone watching isn't familiar with it it's a, a piece of uh, topology to do with you know if you have a, a like a sphere or a ball um and you attach a vector at every single point so imagine like like a ball that's hairy i guess um and the theorem says that if you try and comb it so if you try and make all of the hairs lie flat you won't be able to do that all over the surface um like if you, you know if you just had a flat piece of paper with with hair attached to every point you could comb it also it's lying in the same direction but because of the way the sphere is curved because of the geometry of it there's always going to be one spot where everything kind of sticks up um and and if you know if you're combing someone's hair there's always a spot on the back of the head where all the hair sort of doesn't quite lie flat um, and it, i think it's a really nice piece of maths because the um the, one of the really nice applications of it is that if you think about the um wind airflow around the surface of the earth so that is also kind of a, a vector. It's an arrow pointing in a direction at every point. So at any point on the surface of the Earth, the wind is blowing in a direction. Um, but in particular, the theorem means that at any point in time, there's always exactly or at least one spot on the surface of the Earth where the wind is, is zero. Because you can't have it all pointing in, you know, you can't have it all moving horizontally at the same time. Um, which I think is really nice. I don't know where that spot is, but somewhere in the world, there's the wind is still calm. It's good. 